Hi, we're in the kitchen today. Why? Because it's Sunday. And what does Sunday mean in this household? It means farmer's market and a semi-meal prep. Now, here's the thing. I don't really like meal prepping the way that, you know, the YouTube health and fitness community does. The idea of making something on a Sunday and eating it all the way to Friday, frankly, disgusts me. So while I don't meal prep, I do prep my meals ahead of time to make it easier for me, saves me money, saves me time, saves me a lot of hair pulling. And then when I'm ready to eat it, that's when I cook it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. This is the meal prep video for people who like the taste of good food. It still does take the stress out of cooking every single day, um, but it still gives you delicious, food to eat. So I will actually be linking the recipes that I make in the description box for you guys to check out because I want the focus of this video to be more so how to meal prep. That way you can take my tips and tricks to how I do it into your household and use it with your favorite meals. First things first is what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat. Scroll through Pinterest, look through cookbooks, watch TV, start compiling a list of your favorite recipes. I have a Pinterest board that I use in all my cookbooks. I have little tabs to make note of things that I want to try. Gather them all up in one area and then that way you can pull for them every week. The next step, step number two, is to figure out a plan. How can you develop your meal schedule so you're not overcooking? Can you double up the meal, cook one now, put one in the freezer, and cook one later? Can you make leftovers for dinner and eat those leftovers for lunch the next day. Now step three is the fun part and it is to go grocery shopping. I should actually say tip 3a is to write out all the ingredients that you need for what you want to make and then go through your cabinets, your pantry, your refrigerator, wherever food is in your house and make sure that and cross off things that you already have. I cannot tell you how many bulbs of garlic I have in my kitchen because I keep on buying them every time I go to the grocery store because I walk there and I can't remember if I have garlic or not and then guess what? I buy two bulbs of garlic and I come home and I already have 10. So let's save money, let's save the hassle, do an inventory of what you already have so you don't need to buy it. So you have your list and now it's time to go grocery shopping. My favorite two places to buy my stuff for cooking and meal prep and just life in general is one, uh, the farmer's market and two, Thrive Market. I have been such a proponent of the farmer's market for a really, really long time. For me, I just love to support local farmers. I love to support my local community. And plus, I know where my food is coming from. The Hollywood farmer's market, if you're in Los Angeles, is my personal favorite. I have not been to a farmer's market that has ever beat the Hollywood farmer's market. Uh, they have a wide variety of fruits, veggies, proteins. They have oysters and seafood, which I really like. And it's just an overall really great vibe. Now for my pantry staples, not only my pantry staples, but just my household staples in general, I like to shop at Thrive Market. I was introduced to Thrive Market while listening to the Almost 30 podcast. What I like about them is that they're an online marketplace that works directly with brands to sell you non-toxic, clean, organic, natural products at 25 to 55% off what you would normally get at like, a retail store. They have more than just food staples, pantry staples, nuts. They have wine. I also, like I said, do my household shopping there. I'm trying to go non-toxic. So I get a lot of my household supplies. I get pet supplies. Um, they do makeup. I get some feminine, feminine hygiene products there. Brian and I are kind of toying with the idea of either going like paleo or vegan vegetarian. And I know those are two totally different like aspects and values on the food spectrum, but that's what we're kind of looking into right now. Um, but anyways, when you shop on Thrive Market online, you can filter the catalog of what they have depending on your values or dietary restrictions and to see what products they have that align with what I'm trying to do here. Here is my latest order from Thrive Market. If you want to try Thrive Market, head over to thrivemarket.com slash Asia. Not only do I have a list of my favorite products that I have gotten from Thrive Market since last year when I joined, but you also get 25% off your first order on top of the already 25 to 50% off you get 
normally every day. So once you have your food, once you have your plan, it's time to figure out what you can do now. One, chopping. Honestly, sometimes what deters me from cooking is that I have to chop a lot of stuff, so I try to do that on meal prep day. Um, harder veggies like carrots, broccoli, and peppers can last throughout the week, but softer veggies like cucumbers and tomatoes can only last about three to four days in the fridge. So if you have to cut your veggies twice a week, definitely do that, and that's still better than cutting them every single day. Also, with the exception of a few veggies, I don't wash them until I use them because sometimes that added moisture from washing them will um, actually cause them to mold faster. So just go ahead and chop them, stick them in a container and then throw them in the fridge. And then when you're ready to cook with them, go ahead and wash them. Now for freezing. The freezer is your best friend, people. Lasagna, loaves, taco packets, casseroles, all of that can be made, pre-made or assembled and then thrown in the freezer and then the day before you're ready to eat it, take it out, let it thaw in the refrigerator, and then just stick it into the oven or fry it up or do whatever you need to do. If you want to double the recipe, you can cook cook something tonight and then put the leftover stuff in the freezer and then anything in the freezer should be able to last about three or four months. So if you wanna stock your freezer up with stuff, you have a month's supply of food, okay? After you cook your food, if you do wanna put it in the freezer. Remember to let it cool down first before putting it in the freezer because that will help maintain the quality and texture of the food and also um, of what's already in the freezer. Now, salad dressings. Um, I know a lot of people might think salad dressings are a pain, but they are actually so easy and so delicious to make. And the cool thing is, is that dressings can last in the fridge from one to two weeks. So you can really make one jar of dressing and then use that every day for the next two weeks. Now, marinating. If you want to add flavor to an incredibly dull and dry chicken, marinate it. Fish and shellfish only need to be marinated for about 30 minutes, while tougher meats can be marinated for about 24 hours. What I also like to do is marinate tomatoes and shallots together and apple cider vinegar, and it adds a little sweetness to the apple cider vinegar, um, and then I turn that into a dressing for a salad. So, um, sky's the limits, people. Now, making grains. Um, grains can last in the refrigerator for one to two days, and um, I find that as long as you're using a rice cooker, cooking grains is really easy. So, I personally tend to make my grains about 30 minutes before I wanna eat the meal, but um, any leftovers just throw it in the fridge and it's good for two days. Now, the slow cooker. The slow cooker is your friend, people, just like the rice cooker. All you do is toss all of your ingredients into the slow cooker and then you leave for four, maybe eight hours. You come home and you have a complete meal ready for you. Are you kidding me? Put everything in there in the morning, go to work, and when you come home from work, you have dinner already made for you. While I am not using the slow cooker this week, it is something I do recommend. Also, I have noticed while looking through recipes that a lot of like vegan meat substitutes um, require you to soak nuts the night before you cook it. So um, just remember to do that or else, you know, you go and make your meal and then you realize you didn't make the nut, you didn't soak the nuts, then you have to push your entire meal plan back a day just because you didn't soak the nuts. So I'm telling you that just to remind you, one, soak your nuts, but two, um, remember what you're cooking the day before in case you do need to prep a little extra the day before, just know your menu. Phew. I think that's it. I think those are all the meal prepping tips that I have for you. Of course, you can go ahead and pre-make all your meals in one day if that's what you are okay to do. For me, I prefer the taste of food. So this is how I meal prep my meals, and I hope you found out some nice tips and tricks for your next meal prep day. I'm Asia Dang. If you have anything else to add, please let us know in the comments, and finally, bon appetit!